I want to come back to the ML data science user. You're coming to the cloud. There's all these confusing services. I feel the confusion. I made a video where I talked about how I might think about this or how I do think about it as infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, function as a service, blah, blah, blah. It made me feel really icky afterwards, not just for the buzzwords, but also because even saying I asked not to be a little ch childish, but it's like, gosh, that's a tough one. So here's another lens for this that is useful to me and, and it doesn't have the buzzwords, I don't think. This would be three perspectives for you as the end user. Hey, I just want to write code and I want the cloud to deploy it. I'm willing, next level, I'm willing to build a, a container, typically like a Docker image, and I'm going to then let the cloud deploy that. The final thing would be like, no, I've set up an entire server, so basically I have my application code, my runtime, all that stuff, and I more or less want to lift and shift this over to the cloud. And so if we think of these three generic or general like modes, these are things that as a person I might do. Then there are services, and I'll, I'll use AWS as an example because they're the biggest, most popular, uh, that we could we could choose from. And so, for example, if I'm if I just want to write some code and have the cloud deploy it, AWS Lambda, App Runner in the data science world, something like SageMaker is very useful here. We write some code, whether we're doing that in a SageMaker notebook or from our local machine, but interacting with SageMaker APIs, Lambda APIs, AWS App Runner APIs, Elastic Beanstalk. There's so many of these even with AWS, within AWS alone. It will handle the run, spin up servers, run this in the cloud for me, which is nice. This means we can go really fast, but we will give up some control. You, there's lots of stuff to configure, as, as you can imagine, but we give up a little bit of control. The next layer, and the one that's probably going to be, that's very useful, and I recommend everyone, you know, get some, like basically, you can't go wrong on this route, more or less, is building a container. And I'll tell you why I say that in a second. But basically, at this level, we'd say, hey, I build my local Docker image. Maybe I test it locally, maybe I don't. And I would go to something like ECS to deploy this, or I could go to EKS if I want to use a Kubernetes cluster. But I would say, hey, here's my Docker image. You guys go ahead and pull it down and deploy the thing. This is still pretty fast, but the, it's we're a little bit slower because we do need to have a Docker image first. Docker containers are lightweight, sort of, but there's there's a little bit more work here than just building the actual application code. I've got to, I gotta learn about this Docker thing. On the control side, though, I, I get a little bit more control here. And this one is a bit, I, I feel fuzzier about this. But basically, like you still maintain a lot of control. Um, and especially at the Docker level, you can specify dependencies and things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do uh, just writing, you know, for example, if I have a Python application or if I have an ML pipeline in Python. The final thing is the lift and shift. And so this is like, hey, we've stood up something on a server. We control everything about this server, all the system level dependencies. And we want to move this over. And then you might go with something like EC2. And I should put a star here because there's a bunch of other services that you're going to want to stand up. But basically, I'm going to stay, I'm going to do, I'm going to replicate my physical infrastructure virtually in the cloud or my virtual infrastructure that's on-prem into a virtual cloud environment. And I would use stuff like EC2. This gives me, this is the slowest route, although it can still be quite fast with cloud formation templates. And then I have the highest degree of control. Now, from a data science end user perspective, I don't think this is really going to be your concern. You can still... You could still templatize, you could still control most things you need at each of these levels. But as for a relevant example here is, is what I often see as a common pattern is I'm using something, I'm a data scientist, I'm using something like SageMaker. I need to step out, I need to step slightly outside of the bounds of a, of a well-trodden SageMaker path. And then what is a very useful workaround instead of kind of learning more about SageMaker and its peccadillas, I mean, not, you know, throwing shade here. But it's just to say, hey, SageMaker will accept a Docker image. So if I can do this step, I can then go up a level. And I think App Runner and all the other services will say, yeah, in addition to source code, bring us a Docker image. So if I if I get good at this, then I always have that as an option. Like if something's not working, I can still use that service by just saying, all right, instead of going with whatever your original template kind of uh, yellow brick road path was, there's an alternative path. Pick a different color, but it'll still get me to Oz. And it usually involves writing a Docker image. I don't all, typically need to drop down to this lower level. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful. Instead of IS, yeah, pass, you know, whatever, all those words, we can say something like, hey, if I just want to write code, Lambda, App Runner, Function as a Service type stuff, Platform as a Service type stuff. The container level is really great because we, it has both container services, but we can always go up. And then the last but not least is like the more standard traditional hand, just lift and shift stuff, use a virtual server, EC2, and, and all of its related things.